For implementing bag of words, we will be seeing stop keywords initially, how we can apply stop keywords for the text and then we will be applying lemmatization or stemming and finally we will be using an sklearn library to implement the bag of words document matrix. So let us go to the code part where I will be implementing all the code in spider and we will be seeing how we can do that. Now let us implement the bag of words. Before implementing the bag of words what I am going to do as said in my previous discussion was that I am going to use top keywords and lemmatization on this particular paragraph that I have. After applying lemmatization and stop keywords, we are going to convert this into a document matrix by using bag of words. So the first statement is basically I'm going to use NLTK libraries. So you import this NLTK by using import NLTK command quote and then you are going to import the stop keywords and wordnet lemmatizer from NLTK.corpus and NLTK.stem. So once I execute this, you will be seeing that both the libraries has been executed in the right hand side console. Then the next thing is that this is basically a paragraph that I have and I am going to apply all the steps that is stop words, word net lemmatizer and bag of words on this particular paragraph. As said the first step for this paragraph is basically called as tokenization. For tokenization what we do we convert this whole paragraph into sentences. So you can see that we will be using something called as nltk.sent tokenize. This is a function which will convert this whole paragraph into multiple sentences. So first of all, let me execute this paragraph. Once you execute this paragraph, you can see this as a variable and here your complete paragraph is being seen. Then what we are going to do is that we are going to use nltk.send tokenize and provide the paragraph in the parameter. This in turn converts this paragraph into sentences. So let me just execute this. Once we execute this sentence, basically the paragraph is converted into multiple sentences and the total number of sentences here are five. The next step is basically to create an object of WordNet lemmatizer so that I will be able to apply the lemmatizing concept on this particular sentences. So before going that what I am going to do is that I am going to create a new sentence which is nothing but new underscore sentence over here. What I am going to do is that the first step is basically to remove the stop words from this particular sentences. For that I am going to run a for loop. A for loop is run on all the sentences that I have present over here that is five different sentences and again the first step is basically the tokenization where I will be converting the sentences into words. After converting the sentences into words, I am going to apply a list comprehension. In this list comprehension, I have again a for loop which says for word in words that basically means that all the words that are created from this particular sentences, I am going to apply that if that word is not present in stop words dot words English, I am going to remove that words from this particular list of words. Then after that whatever words I am getting I am going to apply a lemmatizer dot lemmatize functionality on that particular word which will be actually converting this word into its base form or base root form. After converting this into a base root form I am going to append that in all my in my new sentences. So let me just execute this and show to you how it looks. So here it is I have executed this particular line of code. Now you can see that it will take some time because there are so many sentences over here. Now let us compare the sentences and the new underscore sentences after the stop keywords and lemmatization. Now you can see that the lemmatization has actually created some of the base root of this particular words and you can also observe that some of the stop words has also been removed like a and he and a again over here and you can see that before him is also been removed. These all are removed by using the stop keywords. These are the stop keywords that are basically present in English language. If you are really interested to create your own stop keywords, please make a list of words that you don't think that is necessary over there and then you can remove it from your paragraphs. Now we have seen that how we have applied lemmatization and stop keywords for all these sentences. The next step is basically to implement the bag of words in this particular sentences. So I am just going to close this windows. And to implement the bag of words, as I said that I am going to use a sklearn library. This is the module that I am going to install that is basically feature extraction dot text. From that I am going to import another library called as count vectorizer. Always remember that when I am importing a count vectorizer, I need to initialize it by using an object. So I have written cv is equal to count vectorizer. 
and in that I have provided this particular feature called as max underscore features. The max underscore feature is nothing but from the remaining words or from the total words what is the maximum number of frequent words that I need to take. Now let me give an example suppose after converting this particular sentences into words suppose the maximum number of words that are present around 100 or 50 and from that if you want to choose only 30 frequent words what you can do that you can update this max underscore feature variable. So instead of writing 1400 suppose I know that the number of words over here present is around 22 in a particular sentence. So what I am going to do is that I am going to write like I want only the 20 topmost frequent elements from that particular sentences. Once I do this there will be an object that will be created in CV and the next step will just be type cv.fit underscore transform whatever is the new sentences that you have and try to convert it into an array to see how a bag of words is actually created. Please note after you execute this bag of words again just remember the previous topic it will create a document matrix in the columns you will be having all the frequent words and in the rows you will be having basically five sentences. So let me just execute this you can after executing this you will be seeing there is a x value that is created and this x value you can see the number of words in the form of column is basically 19 this is basically from 0 to 19. Why it is coming as 0 to 19 because the maximum feature that I have specified is basically 20 and there are 5 sentences so you have 5 different rows 0 to 4. Now from this bag of words you see that some of the values are coming as 2, some of the values are coming as 1 and some of the values are coming as 0. This basically means that in this particular document matrix the first word suppose if it is something like orator and suppose orator has come 2 times in the sentences so the count is actually incremented to 2. Similarly you can see the different kind of increment value like 1, 2, I think we also saw somewhere as 3. Let us see an example, yes here we have there is a 15th word which is the most frequent element it is present 3 in the first sentence. So this is how a document matrix is actually created. The main purpose of this document matrix is that we have converted this whole text into some integer format. Now if we provide this integer format as our training data set to a model, a model will be able to understand this particular words and sentences. Now we have implemented the bag of words by using python and an sklearn library. Please note we have also implemented stop keywords lemmatization on top of that because we don't want some of the unnecessary keywords that are present in that paragraph. The next thing that we are going to see what are the problems with bag of words and because of this problem we usually use tf-idf model that is basically term frequency and inverse document frequency. The reason why we use tf-idf is that there are some of the problems that involves in bag of words which we are going to discuss in a while and we will also be seeing how we can actually overcome those problems with the help of tf-idf. Now let us see the ppt that I have created for you to understand those better. Now let us see the problems of bag of words. The first problem is basically all the words which are represented in the document matrix have same importance. Now what do you mean by this? Let me go back to my bag of words. Now you can see that the words that are present in the column like is, going, he, to, they are having the same importance because the value that is assigned to it is basically 1 whereas the market is also having the same importance. This becomes very difficult because the model gets confused between the words also since it is having the same value. The second problem is basically there is no semantic information preserved. Now due to this importance level you can see that we, the model will not be able to differentiate the word between is and going because the both are having the same value and even though he, to, a, the other words again which is having the same value as 1. So the model will not be able to preserve the semantic information in all these particular rows. So these are the two basic problems in bag of words. Now what we are going to do is that we are going to see how TFID will overcome these problems. So let me just go to the next slide it says that solution TF-IDF model. By using the TF-IDF model, the semantic information is preserved as the uncommon words are given more importance than usual common words. So let me take an example. Suppose I have a sentence, he is intelligent. Here intelligent will have a more importance than he or is. So this is just an example. We are providing more importance to the intelligent than the other two words. Now let us just understand what is the intuition behind TF-IDF model. 
So let me take an example of sentence. So here is the same sentence that we have discussed with respect to bag of words. He is going to the market, he is going to play cricket and see is a famous person. Again, just remember the first step that is basically lowering the sentences. Then after that, we have discussed about this and the next step will basically be called as tokenization. Tokenization is basically converting that whole group of paragraph into different sentences. So this is my sentence one, sentence two, sentence three. The next step, let's see the intuition behind TF-IDF. TF-IDF basically consists of two components. One is term frequency and one is inverse document frequency. And the complete TF-IDF is basically nothing but the multiplication of term frequency and the inverse document frequency. Now let us see how do we compute term frequency. So I'll go to my next slide and show you that. Term frequency is basically given by the formula number of frequency of words in a sentence divided by the total number of words in the sentence. Again, I'm going to repeat the formula that is nothing but number of frequency of a word in a sentence divided by the total number of words in the sentence. So if I go to my next slide and see this with an example. Suppose this is my first sentence. Say when you want to say. And if I want to calculate the term frequency, as I said in my numerator, it is basically number of frequency of words in a sentence. So let me consider say. How many times says is actually present in this particular sentence? We can see that say is actually present two times. So if I want to compute the term frequency of this, I'll write 1 plus 1 divided by, in the denominator, we have total number of words in the sentence. So it will be nothing but 1 by 6. 1 plus 1 divided by 6, which is nothing but 2 by 6. And in short, it will be 0.33. So this say is having a term frequency of 0.33 in this particular sentence. Now let us say, take the next word that is when. In when, I actually have just one word and the total number of words present in this sentence is 6. So I can actually write it as 1 by 6. So which is nothing but 0.16. Similarly, in the case of you, want, to. So all are having 1 by 6, 1 by 6, 1 by 6 term frequency. Now let us see how we can calculate the term frequency of the sentences that we have discussed in the bag of words. In the next slide, you will be seeing the same sentences that we had actually used in the bag of words. So this is basically sentence one, he is going to the market, the sentence two, he is going to play cricket and sentence three, C is a famous person. Now let us check how TF is calculated for all these sentences. So we know that these are the eight most frequent words that we had actually created by using histogram. and which consists of is going he to a um, cricket famous market. Now let us see the term frequency for this. When I consider the sentence one, he is going to the market. You know that the first keyword is basically is in the most frequent keywords. Do we have is over here? Yes, we do have is. Now if I want to compute the term frequency of this, I'll see that I have one is present over here. So I'll write one divided by six. Why 6? Because there is total number of words in this particular sentence is 6. So which is nothing but 0.16. Similarly, with respect to that, let us see for the another word that is going. The going is also present once over here. So I'll write 1 divided by 6. Similarly, in the case of he, 1 divided by 6, 2, 1 divided by 6. Now, the most interesting key word is a. I don't have a over here. So if you don't have a over here, I can basically write this by 0 by 6. So in short, I can call this as zero because I don't have A over here. And if I try to calculate the term frequency, it will give me zero. Similarly, in the case of cricket and famous, it will give me zero because I don't have those words in the sentence. But I have market, which I'm actually getting it formed by one by six. Now let us see the term frequency for the second sentence. Similarly, we'll be using the second sentence and computing these values. One by six, one by six, one by six, zero, one by six, one by six, one by six. And similarly for the third sentence, now you have she is a famous person. Now you can see that is is also present in this particular sentence. So I can write one divided by five. Why five? Because I have five words in this particular sentence. Similarly in the case of a and in the case of famous, I'll be having one by five, one by five, one by five. Now, the main reason of this term frequency is that I am assigning different, different values that is between zero to one in this particular term frequency for each and every sentences and with respect to the words. Now from this PPT, we have seen that how we can compute term frequency. Again, note, 
Again, I'm trying to revise the term frequency formula. That is nothing but number of occurrences of a word in a sentence divided by number of words in that sentences. So this is the basic formula and with respect to each and every sentences, you will be having different different values for each and every words. The next part is basically how I can compute inverse document frequency because finally, the term frequency and the inverse document frequency will be multiplied to form a document matrix and finally, we'll be able to give that to a model for better understanding. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe to our channel for more such videos. A cat killed. Average is dead.